The year is 1964 and it is Beatlemania time, baby. Neil Armstrong is training for his moon mission. Fidel Castro is uh, playing baseball. And the world's greatest hairstyles look a little something like this. It's a look. Caught in this year between hippies and hairspray, the world was also introduced to the little game show that could called Jeopardy. A brand new game with this mind-blowing twist. It gives you the answers and you have to give it back the questions. It's a an odd, very loose structure, but hey, it works. It's quick, quirky, cheap to produce for daytime television. Little did they suspect when Jeopardy first launched that this would be the thing to outlive the wacky hairstyles, the Beatles breakup, Neil's trips to space, and even ugh, Fidel Castro inspiring a love of knowledge and trivia across multiple generations to come. And all of it was guided by the show's warm and confident host. And now, here's the star of Jeopardy, Art Fleming. Good morning, thank you players, thank you Don Carter. Art Fleming. Yeah, it wasn't actually Alex Trebek in those early days. He actually came later when the show was revived in 1984 with these spiffy new, totally rad 80s graphics. Like, look at that thing. It's like the ball is actually spinning in three dimensions. It's mind blowing. And just like Alex Trebek wasn't Jeopardy's first host, Jeopardy wasn't Trebek's first hosting gig. You see, all throughout his 30s, he bounced around between different game shows. Games that nowadays are long forgotten, like The Wizard of Odds, haha, <laughs> cute. Double Dare, uh, don't get too excited, it's not the Nickelodeon version. And the dice rolling game High Rollers. Now, here's the man with the action, Alex Trebek. <laughs> Thank you very much. Look at that hair. Also, brief digression here, but as I was digging through all these archived old game show clips, I found this clip of him hosting another show called Battle Stars with celebrity guest Betty White. And the only reason I bring it up here is because this is 1982 and Betty White is still looking the way she does here in 2021. Diamonds and Betty White are truly forever. Anyway, getting back on track here, when Alex landed the hosting job for 1984's revival of Jeopardy, it was like a match made in heaven. For roughly the next 40 years, audiences would welcome Alex into their homes every single weeknight for their trivia fix. He was parodied. Welcome back to Celebrity Jeopardy. Once again, I'm going to recommend that our viewers watch something else. He was animated. Aren't we forgetting something, Marge? You were down $5,200. Judges? Red Mom! He even swore a couple times. Where is Alex? I'm here. And in that time, through it all, he became to viewers irreplaceable. Now, I don't know if you followed the news, but since Alex Trebek's tragic death last year due to pancreatic cancer, Jeopardy has been trying its darndest to find a new host. And they've been failing at it pretty spectacularly, to the point where it's now a meme of its own, putting the whole future of the show into, pardon the pun, Jeopardy. Basically, the last year has been like this revolving door of guest hosts, ranging from people that you'd expect, like all-time great players Ken Jennings and Buzzy Cohen, or famous news hosts like Katie Kirk and Anderson Cooper, and then some other more questionable choices like football star Aaron Rodgers, who, while seemingly a great guy, just felt like a really random choice, as well as Dr. Oz, who's been accused of peddling in some very heavy non-science for a show based on, you know, science and fact. In total, 16 hosts cycled through with varying degrees of success, and it's been popular for online articles to rank all of them from best to worst, but with most guests getting to host like five to 10 episodes, seems unfair to judge when considering there's 8,000 episodes of this show and you're filling the shoes of someone who was in that role for nearly four decades. So it's gonna take some time to find your own rhythm, but regardless, there were some high and low performers. It seemed like the former winner, Ken Jennings, was the odds on favorite to take the job, at least until some off color Twitter comments got him into hot water as it does to so many, throwing his chances into question. From there, former Star Trek and Reading Rainbow star LeVar Burton became the internet's clear frontrunner for the gig, and even Deadpool himself threw his hat into the ring in defense of LeVar Burton. But still, the question on everyone's mind was, who was gonna take the job? The answer was revealed about two weeks ago, and it was... Mike Richards. Never heard of him? Yeah. Uh, most people hadn't. He's actually one of the show's executive producers, and knowing that fact, you can start to see why people might be a little bit mad about that decision. Here, you have one of the most prestigious and well-respected game shows in all of history, hosted by Alex Trebek. This man who is beloved and respected by four decades of viewers, and the guy in charge gives this incredibly important job to himself. 
I mean, don't get me wrong, the memes are great, Mike, but this is not the way to circulate your name around the internet. I guess he was all like, you want something done right, you gotta do it yourself. And I get that, but at the same time, this is not a DIY fix your own toilet sort of moment. There is no YouTube tutorial on how to replace Alex Trebek until, of course, this episode. So maybe stick with the other, potentially more qualified, more exciting candidates. And then the internet started to do what the internet always does. They started digging into his past. And of course, they found that he regularly made demeaning jokes about women on his podcast, about their looks, about their weight. He would make racist jokes, jokes about the homeless or people in poverty. This wasn't just an instance of one or two off-color comments or a misphrased joke. It was a repeated pattern of behavior on a show that he himself produced. And so only nine days after it was announced that he was stepping up to be the permanent ongoing host for Jeopardy, he stepped right on back down. Jeopardy was, yet again, without a host. This, in turn, threw the game show's taping schedule into complete chaos. And making the bad situation even worse is that Mayim Bialik, the former actress of The Big Bang Theory and the show's other choice of host to fill in for special event episodes, has also started to take heat for past comments doubting the safety of vaccines, her criticism of birth control, her perceived victim blaming when it comes to sexual assault in Hollywood. At this point, everyone is practically ready to just throw up their hands, scrap Jeopardy entirely, and find Finally, green light the reboot of Nickelodeon's gut. Yes, I do have it. And don't get me wrong, well, I would love to watch someone hand out pieces of that glowing radical rock. And while I also appreciate the irony of a show dubbed a sports competition when you're trying to shoot basketballs accurately while strapped to bungee cords, I don't think it's time to throw in the towel on Jeopardy just yet. I think I have a solution. You ready for this? It's me us, YouTubers, digital content creators. I know, I know, advocating for YouTubers in mainstream media. You didn't see this one coming from me. It's not like I've ever done this one before. But really, I truly believe unironically that we have what this show needs. Give us the chance to host. And okay, I'm the first one to lampshade that part of this comes from my own love of the show. I grew up watching Jeopardy. I looked up to Alex Trebek. No matter how crazy my life got, he was this constant. He was a rock. He was a role model that I watched practically every night of my life at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. To me, he was someone who encouraged the world to always pursue knowledge no matter how trivial. And in no small way, it was years of watching Jeopardy that inspired me to make channels like this one that celebrate celebrate education, that celebrate being smarter, and just learning all you can about the cool, random stuff in the world around you. To me, Alex Trebek was this authentic figure, not some big Hollywood host. He felt real. That was Alex's X Factor. And if that sounds familiar, well, it should. If you hang out on the internet a lot, you know that authentic is the buzzword of us digital creators since 2014. Like, OMG, us YouTubers are so authentic. That's how they're shaking up the entertainment system. And well, yeah, it is definitely super cliche to be talking about it here in 2021. And also, it's not a guarantee that all YouTubers are authentic here in 2021. There is still a lot of truth to that statement. Online creators try to be real. We need to be real. We try to connect with our audience. We try to be ourselves on camera and be reliable figures that you want to hang out with in your house on a regular basis. We don't answer to network managers. We're our own barometers of what is and isn't okay to put out there into the world. We're certainly odd. Most of us are more than a little bit nerdy, but let's be honest, what Jeopardy viewer isn't? And most importantly, we're people that our audiences have formed a relationship with. They know us well enough to let us into their house. Alex Trebek became that person for a lot of people. Just, you know, he did it 30 years earlier than the rest of us and he didn't have to do a cinnamon challenge to get there. The other thing, and this is a bit of tough love for you, network television, but we're younger. <gasps> shock of all shocks, I know, this isn't coming as news to you, but I looked across the 16 guest hosts and the average age was 53. For instance, I love LeVar Burton and I think, honestly, with time, he would settle into that hosting role nicely, but it's worth mentioning he's 64. He's 24 years older than when Alex got his start on the show. And hey, I have been on YouTube for 10 years at this point, so I'm all aboard the age is just a number train. This is not me trying to say that you can't do amazing jobs at that age, but I will say that the language of media is different now than it was 40 years ago. For the show to continue for another 40 years, it needs a fresh look. Just like when Alex got his start in 1984 during the first Big Jeopardy reboot. I'm not saying that you gotta go out and hire a member of Hype House to host Jeopardy, please. 
Do not do that. Do not do that. But I am saying that the next host of Jeopardy would do well if they can believably speak across generations, all the way to Gen Z while not alienating those longtime viewers of the show. Or should I say not alienating them any more than the last eight months have already done. And a younger host isn't just about preserving the show's longevity, it's about Jeopardy continuing to properly represent what current relevant knowledge is. Don't get me wrong, I loved Alex Trebek, but there is a reason every time YouTube or hip hop or video games or memes were mentioned in a clue, it became really awkward and that's because Alex and the other contestants are disconnected from that world from this world a world that let's face it is getting harder and harder for the show to ignore if it hopes to continue to grow to be sure it'll always be valuable to know about fine arts and geography and history and science but at this point being literate in internet social media yeah that's just as important. On top of being connected to the trivia of today, online creators are connected with the production itself. Want to produce a format that's quick, low budget, and has to be delivered in a really short amount of time? Hmm, look around you. Welcome to the club, friends. Except YouTubers aren't just acting in those cheap, fast, high burn productions. We're also writing and producing and editing and working really closely with the teams every single day of that production. And because our brands are intrinsically tied to our faces online, we are meticulous about ensuring that everything we touch is as perfect as it can be. I don't care if your channel is React Girl 23 and you spend your whole day pretending to be surprised by TikTok kitchen gadgets. <gasps> oh my gosh, I can't believe it does that! You are still making sure that every second of that video is exactly the way you want it to be. Ah, oh, reaction videos. Miss the boat on that one, Matt. The point is this. Connectedness and attention to detail matter when you're stepping into a show with a pedigree like Jeopardy's. Are there some bad eggs who've given this community some less than stellar PR in the past? Yeah. Absolutely, but those are few and far between in what is an ocean of intelligence and talent that exists in the digital space. And that's especially true of the people that I'd recommend for this job. I know it's a big internet out there, so let me call out some of my favorites. There's Derek from Veritasium, Diana, aka Physics Girl, Michael, Kevin, or Jake from the Vsauce channels, Marquez Brownlee, Kyle Hill, Simone Yetch, Hank and John Green are great, Destin from Smarter Every Day. I don't know if channels like CGP Grey or Kurzgestat would be interested in the job since they tend to stay off camera, but they would be brilliant in their own right. Heck, if you're looking for a throwback, even Vi Hart would be awesome. Here in 2021, these are the people that audiences turn to for information. And that's not just me blowing smoke. In 2018, a Pew Research study surveyed nearly 5,000 Americans and found that 51% used YouTube videos to learn new things. More recent stats on Think with Google say that the number could be as high as 86%. We are, in a lot of ways, the public faces of knowledge now. The modern Bill Nyes or Mr. Wizards. Why not let us represent that on a shiny floor in front of a big wall of TVs? And yeah, this is totally where I volunteer as tribute. Duh, of course I would love to host Jeopardy. It is literally in the title of this video. I would like to nominate myself for the role. I think I'd be great. And I know I should probably lampshade this or state all the reasons why everyone else is so much better, how I'm biased to my own opinion, but you know what? I'm, I'm not. I think I'm as much in the running for this thing as all those other awesome educators or all those other 16 guest hosts who have been cycled through the show at this point. I'm lucky enough to be in this amazing cohort of educators. I'm lucky enough to be a Jeopardy aficionado. And I'm lucky enough to be here at a time when the job is open. You get 0% of the jobs that you don't apply for, so here I am applying Mike Richards. I have four YouTube channels that have threaded the needle of education and entertainment for the last 10 years. I mean, no one else is going to be using Minecraft to teach audiences about the explosive properties of moss, or heck, use the movie Minions as an excuse to talk about a lobster's immortal telomeres. I've always said that these channels are educational channels that are disguised as gaming, film, and food channels, with the goal of making learning fun, and wouldn't you know it, that's exactly what Jeopardy is. It's a way to make nerding out fun for the whole family. And heck, I've hosted. Thank you for tuning in. It is an honor to have you today. Hopefully you're strapped in for a long day full of fun <laughs> and excitement. It's going to be a good one. This is YouTube Originals Presents. Game Theory's $1 million challenge for St. Jude. Why am I sitting here in this creepy recreation of a restaurant? It's a good question. Today we're exploring the world of fear through animatronic survival restaurant horror gaming. Oh yeah, it's a real thing. And here we go. Are you excited? I'm excited. The game is on. Welcome to a new breed of reality. Ladies and gentlemen, it is July 1st, 2016. I'm Matt Pat, and this 
is the runner. Are you in a relationship? I think this is important to know. Yes, yes, happily married. And Candy, are you in a relationship? Okay, I had my hot girl summer. Hold on, the air <laughs> is cutting out of my car. Including hosting the most unruly group of Jeopardy contestants that you could possibly have hoped for. This dreamy Freddy wears a red, red, red stripe. Kruger. Joel. What? Joel. <laughs> Remember when I kindly asked you at the beginning of the he, show? He, he said Machine Gun Kelly before you were done. You also said they won't be penalized. But, but to be fair, Joel, I was like most of the way. I was like two, two thirds through the that, no, I'm not gonna be fair about that. Okay. Thanks for disagreeing with literally everything I said, Joel McHale. I was hoping that one day I would be able to use some of those clips as a part of an audition for Jeopardy, and you talked through literally everything I said, so. Really appreciate it. Do I think that me or really any of the YouTubers I mentioned in this video can do what Alex Trebek did? No. But the key detail that this whole host search is forgetting is that the new host of Jeopardy shouldn't be looking to replicate what Alex Trebek did. There's a reason he's an icon that can't be replaced, because he did the show his way. Trying to copy Alex's act will always read as false or just a worse version of what he was doing. This isn't about filling someone else's shoes, it's about finding a new set of shoes to stand behind the podium, which is a really awkward metaphor that I tried to make work, but I, I think you get the point. Anyway, I am convinced that I or any of those other names that I mentioned would be great for the role. 100% yes. Would we need some polish? Yeah, but let's be honest, everyone does. Even the most experienced broadcasters who've stood behind that podium have struggled to find their natural rhythm. But for the continued health and success of the show, the host answer may just be found in the form of a question, who is MatPat? So I've laid all my cards on the table here. I'm not making bones about it. I just want to host Jeopardy. It'd be a dream come true. But all jokes aside, I recognize that no one from Jeopardy is ever going to see this video. Something tells me they're not going to be watching film theory's analysis of the future Jeopardy host. So this is where I need you guys and your help. See, you loyal theorists can help me get Jeopardy's attention in two ways. And if you have ever loved a video on this channel or any of the other channels or Honestly, any of the other YouTubers that I mentioned in this video do me a solid. First, it took LeVar Burton 300,000 signatures to get called on to host an episode. It'll probably take us at least that much, or probably even more, because we are really coming at this thing as the underdogs. So below this video is a link. Go right now, sign that petition, get your friends and family to sign it. Basically, I need as many signatures as possible to just show that there is a groundswell of support for a digital creator to even have a shot of hosting this show. So if you could sign that, that would be great. Secondly, if you are on Twitter, tweet at the official Jeopardy account. It's just at Jeopardy, very easy. Use the hashtag, who is Matt Pat? I'm hoping with enough tweets and enough hashtags, they'll be interested, they'll be like, who is Matt Pat? And they'll look me up and I'll start a conversation. Whether it's me or any of the other YouTubers I mentioned or a YouTuber who's awesome and I just don't know him yet, the fact of the matter is I love this show and I love digital creators and I care about both of those worlds a lot. Would it be a dream of mine to guest host for an episode or two? Yeah, absolutely, it would be a dream come true. One of the greatest honors I could possibly ever receive and that is certainly a goal of this video, but ultimately what I really care about is for the tradition to continue on strong, to, to move forward in a way that I believe is going to be best for the show so it can go on and inspire more generations, the way that I was inspired growing up watching it. Again, thank you all for your help. The petition is right below this video, top line of the description, and a tweet or two with the hashtag whoismatpat would be really helpful. Wish me luck, friends. And remember, it's all just a theory, a film theory, and cut.